Hey guys, it's Stuby the Bob. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make the best chorizo kimchi fried rice. So kimchi fried rice is probably my favorite food. It is what I crave after a long night of drinking for drunchies or munchies, when I'm hungover, when I am, or just in the middle of the day. The point being, I crave it all the fucking time. I love kimchi obviously, cause I'm Korean, but this dish is really a great introduction to those who haven't tried kimchi or who wanna try kimchi for the first time and are slightly scared by some of its funkiness or its strong flavors. By cooking out the kimchi in pork fat or chicken fat or whatever protein fat you have, it really mellows out some of the flavors and makes it easier to eat for whoever's trying it for the first time. So this is something that I really recommend cooking for your family or your friends who have not really dipped their toes into the world of kimchi yet. So the dish that I cooked on TikTok has three components. It has the fried rice, obviously, encapsulating the onsen tamago, which is the Japanese soft boiled eggs. And it has bugak, which is the fried crispy rice seaweed crackers on top. To make this all, it probably takes anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours. But what you can do is divide the steps out into multiple days. You can make the bugak first, you can make the tamago later, and then you can make the kimchi fried rice at the very end. So it first starts off with making the glue. Add a quarter cup of gluttonous rice flour and one cup of water to a small pot. Put the heat on medium low and whisk to break down any lumps. After five minutes, the consistency should be a thick glue-like paste. If it's too thick, then just add some more water and it should be fine. Transfer to a small bowl and let it cool down. Let's prepare the nori sheets. Cut the nori sheets in half. On a parchment lined baking sheet, boil with sesame oil. This ensures the bugak doesn't stick once it has finished drying. Paint the glue on the nori sheets. Aim for about one tablespoon of glue per each side. Gently place the nori on the baking tray. Garnish with sesame seeds. Uh, this is a process that I forgot to do, but make sure you do. Bake it in the oven for two hours at 120 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit or until all the moisture has evaporated from the pugak. Now let's get started on the onsen tamago. So these eggs are sous vide at 145 degrees Fahrenheit or 62.7 Celsius for 45 minutes and this is what it looks like. It is absolutely beautiful, it is velvety and gorgeous, so you have to give it a try. Let's prepare the ingredients for the kimchi fried rice. Today I'm just using store-bought kimchi, but obviously homemade is better. I have a kimchi recipe on my YouTube channel, so please go check it out. I didn't want the kimchi to stain my wooden cutting board, so I ended up just pulsing it in a food processor. Now for the sauce. Depending on the type of kimchi you have, you may not even need the sauce. But since I was using store-bought kimchi instead of my bussin homemade kimchi, it needed a little sprucey spruce. I also added a little bit of sesame oil for that umami. Let's prepare the rest of the ingredients. Finely chop your scallions. Now let's get your day-old rice out. The reason why we're using day-old rice instead of freshly made rice is because freshly made rice has too much moisture and would steam while we cook it instead of frying. We're also going to coat the individual granules with some sesame oil and neutral oil to help it better fry. Get a large skillet, in goes one tablespoon of neutral oil, the chopped green onions, and the chorizo. You can see now that the fat has rendered out from the chorizo and the green onions are looking translucent to golden brown. This is a good point to add your kimchi and let's cook it out for about two minutes. Now this is a good point to add your rice in. You want to break apart any big lumps, so just use your spatula and kind of pound down, I guess, um, like what I'm doing. I don't really know how to explain this motion, but all I'm doing is just breaking it apart and I'm giving it a taste test now to see whether or not I'm going to need to put in the sauce. And since I used store-bought kimchi, it really did need a bit of that spruce, so I decided to put the sauce in. So the fried rice is looking good. We want to let some of that steam out, so 
take it off the grill and let it rest for five minutes before we plate. Now, this is a good time to prepare the bugak. The bugak has crisped nicely in the oven. If it over crisped, however, just apply more of the glue and dry it out for another 10 minutes and it should have that nice golden crisp when you fry it. And voila, my bugak minus sesame seeds because I forgot is ready. Now let's get to plating. I used a ring mold, but that's totally optional. I was being extra dextralicious. What you want to do is kind of create a little hole for the egg to be like snugly fit in, like a little cave. And you want a blanket of kimchi fried rice on top so that it's nice and snug before it gets eaten. You want to let this kind of stay in the ring mold for five minutes to let it set or else it will fall apart. Now garnish with chopped scallions, the pugak, and you definitely want to crush the pugak for that dramatic look. I also sprinkled on some sesame seeds and a bit of sesame oil to make it look pretty and for that umami, we're gonna split it in half and look at that oozy oozy egg yolk. Wow. My mouth is watering as I edit. Holy, holy moly. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. What really takes this kimchi fried rice to the next level is the contrasting textures. I mean, hear that crunch. So bad. So that is all for the kimchi chorizo fried rice video. The detailed recipe is also written in the description box. So if you want to take a look, go ahead and that's it. Bye bye.